Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 134. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. What's going on, everybody? I go by YB Norris. I'm an artist, clothing designer, and you are now tuned in live, man. Copy that. Shouts out to my man before we start off the episode, sipping with Sammy. Me and YB was on the episode together on Sam's probably like two months ago. Sam said, nah, I got y'all together because I really thought y'all would click and y'all would be a good situation. And we've been talking ever since. So shouts out to sipping with Sammy. Every Monday, Sam doing them lives. I think he do them at like 7 o'clock on the YouTube channel. So y'all get over there, hit my man, hit the subscribe button, and show him some love. Um, episode 134, this is a spotlight episode. We've been doing a lot of spotlights lately. Like I keep telling y'all, we got shit people doing it. I like, we're going to spotlight it right here. So now, spotlights get flipped, though. We do those in reverse. So we start off with what do we need to know? What do we need to know is sponsored by H2H Cleaning. That is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. We're doing roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVACs, cleanups, cleanouts, uh, remodeling, carpets, flooring. However you need that situation, we're hustling it over there at H2H Cleaning. So you get with us for big jobs or small jobs. We're here to help. So just tell us how we can help. Now, YB, what do we need to know? You are now tuned in, like I said, to an artist, musician, rather. Also a clothing designer, future clothing designer. I got the merch on right now. It's called No Apparel. That is N-O-R, No Apparel. Stands for No Opportunities Rush. Um, you can find me on social media. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on TikTok. Uh, in terms of the music, Got a project coming out, actually, two days from now. SIS, tap in. Um, where do I start, man? First of all, thank you for having me. You know, it's an opportunity for me, but it's also an honor for me to be able to sit here and be able to tell the audience, like, what I'm doing. Because for the most part, I be in my own world, be dolo. And, you know, I always be working on stuff. I always be trying to come up with the next big thing. And, you know, I'm like a sponge. I just take what I see. I stay quiet about it, but I, like, I process everything. You get what I'm saying? And then when I move around it, it's like you see it for yourself. I don't really like to say too much. So this gives me a platform for me to be able to really, like, express what I'm doing. I mean, you see it is everywhere. And this is just the clothes. This ain't even on the artist tip. But so that. So that's why we started off with the what do we need to know for a spotlight episode. Because, like you said, you got a project coming out. Now you got the project, you got the clothing line. Tell them though, what's the name of the where's what's the name of the clothing line? Where are you moving with the clothing line? Where do they follow the clothing line? Tell them where the music is available. How do they tap in with the music? Tell them what they need to know. Cause you got somebody sitting in Dallas right now who don't know you, and they saying, "Well, damn, why do I need to know him? What do his, what do he have going on that I need to be tapped into?" No, this that's, is your that's, this is the this is the joint for you right here. <laughs> the floor is yours. Sure. That's the thing. No, I just said it. Nora Pearl. That's the name of the clothing line. No, oh, that's what I'm saying. What, all right, so you like you got no apparel. What are we moving with no apparel? No, so we moving for the to person clothes. who don't know. Give it all to them. No, we moving the clothes. We moving the obviously we moving the apparel, man. That's number one. Do we tapping in? I got some. Uh, I got some pants coming out. I got some hats. Come, I, no, not hats. I'm sorry. The little fanny packs. I got some fanny packs coming out. I got some bags coming out. I got blankets coming out. I got tiles. We doing. We tapping in with everything, man. We tapping in with the vending machines. We tapping in with the water. When it comes to the brand, stay in the building process, and I'm still finding different directions to go with it. But that's for the most part the blueprint that is that's laid down right now. You won't see it everywhere. I'm trying to get tapped in with the billboard companies. My, I got homies that got their own enterprises. They got they tapped in on the real estate tip. And uh, uh, we're going to be promoting in terms of the real estate. I'm also getting into real estate. So if y'all want to tap in with me on that one, man, I'll be loving the work when it comes to properties. But um, the music, you can find me on all social media platforms. I actually just took everything down for the most part. It's going to be re-uploaded. So you can find me on Apple Music. You can find me on Amazon Music. You can find me on Tidal. You can find me on Spotify, SoundCloud. We on all the major platforms. Um, also, I want to make an announcement. 
I got a, a photo shoot coming out. The photo shoot is going to be dropping. The, the new reveal is going to be a new line of uh, women's clothing. I got sweatsuits and stuff like that. I'm going to have uh, a little raffle going on. That's TBA, though, to be announced. But that's what we basically doing with this COVID line, man. Like, we everywhere with it. You know, I really want people to see what no apparel is. It stands for no opportunities rushed. You feel what I'm saying? And in this game, like, whatever you doing, whatever bracket you're trying to be in, you have to make sure that you have a plan and you're executing that plan, but you're not rushing through that plan. You ever been in a situation where it's like, you got something coming up and it's like you trying to make sure everything together with it. You trying, whether you're working with people, whether you're working with assets, you trying to make sure everything together and it's still not necessarily going the way you want it to go. Well, you, you know, always got to make sure all your steps is, is taken care of before you just do shit. Because, you know, I got the whole situation with my clothing line and mm -hmm. I don't I don't do things just to say I don't have things just to say I have them without having done the homework, without filling the material, without knowing what type of shit we're going to use to do all that. I can't just come out with something just so I can say, yeah, I got, I got like hats. I've been working on hats for a while. I had some hats. I didn't like them, so I didn't sell them to nobody. <laughs> I never even mm -hmm. put them out there because I didn't like them. If I don't like it, then I'm not going to try to sell it to you. If I wouldn't wear it, I wouldn't try to sell it to you unless you asked for it because, you know, ultimately all my shit be customized. So if that's what you want, then that's what we're going to get you. But you got to make sure all your quality is there before you start selling it. Because it ain't about trying to burn somebody out of one cell. It's about trying to make sure that the quality is good so you can make 20, 30, 40, 50 cells. So absolutely, I understand you, you got to do the homework. And you basically just broke down the meaning of my clothing line. That's why it's no opportunity rush. Like you said, the opportunity is there. Whatever you got, whatever you done built, whatever idea you had, the opportunity is there. It's going to be there. It's opportunities that close when they say, you know, hey, don't let the door close on you. Yeah, it's going to be doors that's closed and it's going to be new doors that's open. But the opportunity is still always going to be there. You can't rush through it. Like you said, you gonna, you don't like the hats that you were selling to people. You ain't like them. So it's like... I didn't even, no, I didn't even sell them. I, I did them and then looked at them and was like, this material is shitty. Like, the yeah. feel ain't good. I'm not selling these joints. <laughs> like... It's raining. My wife could wear one of these drones. <laughs> like, like shit. And I went through the same, but there's nothing wrong with that though. Cause it's like when you branding, you gotta make sure your brand is everywhere. You gotta make sure you know what I'm saying? People see it everywhere. They have to. It's on my phone. It's on me. It's in the back of my car. You feel what I'm saying? It's everywhere. You gotta make sure. I'm just trying to take that to the next level. Okay. Instead of that being on me, I went on the side of a bus. I went on the side of a building, and that's what mm -hmm. we try to really tap into. Like, I want to make sure, like, everybody know what what is North. You know what I'm saying? Okay, where can I find it? And then we tap, we tap into that bracket. When it comes to the music, too, the music tie in with the clothes just as much. But the music, I took a break off from music for a little while, like a long break. Right. Like a this is what I this, we was about to lead right into the music. All right, now this is what I need to know. You said I got a new project coming out. How many joints is yes, on this sir. project? Yes, sir. It's a single. It's a single. What's the single? Yes, sir. S I S. What is it about? Talk to walk us through walk us through the song. What's the song about? What's the importance and the meaning behind the song? The song is an introduction. The song is a reintroduction. Let me correct myself. And it's basically kind of getting everybody familiarized with who I am again, what I've been through, and who I'm about to become. So the song itself is the sound and the energy that it gives. If we just going to talk about just how it sounds, we're going to break down everything with it. But right now, we got to go piece by piece because I want to give them everything. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about the sound. The sound of it gives that opening scene intro feel. You get what I'm saying? It's like, okay, mm -hmm. we about to get up a song because that's what it is. I'm coming back onto the scene. Been on the scene for a minute, but I ain't been in view. You get what I'm saying? So now you got the sound is like an intro. What I'm saying is is reintroducing people to me. Now, most of my audience. They've been rocking with me for, for years on end, I can say. But I also got a lot of new people who just came onto the scene, so they might not know what was going on three, four, five years ago. 
You get what I'm saying? So now they got to see what's going on now. Then they'll be able to go back. I had to, like, come back with a clean slate and clear everything because that's what had happened to me taking a two-year hiatus. I'm like, okay, this is the direction we're about to go in. And then I got a project coming. I, I don't necessarily know the drop date, but I have an album coming. It's going to be my first album. And that's kind of going to give everybody the, the meat of the situation. You get what I'm saying? They, it's going to give them different vibes. It's going to give them different sounds, but it's also going to give a different direction. Like you got so many artists out here that they always get, everybody got the same one, two, three, four, five step. You know what I'm saying? Or I want to give something for the streets or I want to give something for the females or I want, I ain't really going that direction because I feel like nothing wrong with it. I ain't stepping on the discrediting it, but I'm trying to give them something else. So this is the thing about this you know, thing that you just said right there. This is the joint that I always would tell people. This was a part of the seminars. Hot House seminars can still be purchased. Available, you know what I'm saying? Five, five part series still available right now for purchase. Just DM me. I'll get right at y'all. Uh, um, You have to find a lane and dominate that lane. And like you just said, if everybody's in the lane of I got to join for the streets, I got to join for the chicks, then everybody already going that way. I don't want to go that way too because it's already a log mm-hmm. jam that way. Let me go this other way where niggas is going, damn, I need to think about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how many people, this is how I got to sneaks. How many niggas got a clothing line? How many niggas got sneakers and got versions and variations and flavors on them joints? Water bottles and shit. It ain't too, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It ain't too many people yeah. in that lane. So you don't want to be in the same lane. So I commend and salute you for even recognizing that and saying, I want to go over there. Appreciate like, it. Appreciate just because you, just because you figure it. out that there's a different lane and a better way to go don't mean that you demean it whatever way nobody else is going. No, that's the way for you. Then you go that way. This might pop for you, but for me, I'm looking at shit totally different, and that's what you're saying. Now, that's basically what it. Go ahead, my fault. When we did the episode with Sam, this was something that kept coming up. Was you was talking about the growth and the change in yourself, and then you saying it's the same thing with the music and all of that. What was it that made you say like, "Yo, I got to make this change," or I just evolved, I just grew up a little bit? What was that situation? It was a combination of both. It was like. It was what life was giving to me at that time. And then it was also what was going on inside of me mentally. Like, it, they played they played a hand in each other. Because when I look at life, the experiences that I was going through in life, they really set me up for what's going on now. It was like, it forced me to have to grow older and think older than I actually was. But then eventually, after it kept, Kind of, they, they kept beating that concept against my head. Eventually, I started to really tap into myself and be like, all right, this is how you got to move now. You might not want to move like this. You might not want to grow. You might want to, but this is how you got to move. Now. You'll learn to love it. You'll learn to hate it, whichever one it is, because I learned to love certain things that I shouldn't have loved or that I should have loved back then, and I learned to hate certain things that I should have hated back then. You feel what I'm saying? I might have been a certain way when I was a younger artist spitting certain shit that right now I can't say I really like anymore versus other stuff that I probably hate when I was a young boy but now it's like I love it so you gotta put that inside that's, that, that's ev- yeah that's evolution that's growth everybody doesn't mm-hmm. hate growth and evolution for sure they don't they don't evolve and I wasn't turning my head on evolution so that's really where the music is at and I can tell people which direction it's going to go, but that, I guess that's what makes me such a good musician and just such a good artist. It's kind of like I always keep my fans on their tools. I don't say too much because I don't even know, but I know it's going to be something. You feel me? It's like I don't even know which direction I'm going to go. That's not coming at my planning skills, and that's not coming at my promoting skills. It's just that's what I like to do as an artist. It's like, I don't know. I mean, y'all going to see what y'all going to get because I don't even know what I'm going to give to y'all. And then when it's behind closed doors. It's like, I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy back there. I'm thinking to myself, I'm planning, I'm taking stuff that we had from this conversation and from the previous conversation. I'm taking no, all the notes I done took. They all coming into what I'm creating. And then what I produce it, when I present it, when I broadcast it, and y'all see it, it's like, oh, oh, he put that in there. He put that in there. He did this. He did that. Like, case in point, me and my grand, my grandfather's a musician. Um, he based in he based in North Philly. It's a North Philly based band called Composite Truth. 
And back in the day, used to be a part of change. Real big overseas, UK. Uh, he got a major fan base in Baltimore, all over the country. But I was thinking about doing a collab with him. I didn't know which direction it was going to go. I didn't know how I was necessarily going to go about it. But I wanted to do that. You feel me? Like you should probably you should do that because again, it's the same thing we talked about. That's a different situation. That's a whole different sound. It's a whole different feel, and it's something that everybody can't do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And people don't have the resources to be able to tap into some shit like that. So that's what I'm saying. That's facts. That's facts. So you definitely need to take advantage of those situations when you. If you had the ability to reach and do something that the next motherfucker can't do, because everybody's competition in the situation. Nothing wrong with competing mm-hmm. with the next man. As long as we do it with respect and I ain't trying to knock you down to build myself up, then we good. But if I got some shit that's going to give me the advantage, nigga, I'm going to take full advantage of the advantage. Like, full advantage. Because I know you're going to take advantage. advantage if you got an advantage. Ain't no, and you can't hesitate. But you got to be two feet in and two feet out with it. And it's a balance, man. Life is a balance. It's like when you see somebody walking on a, on a wire, you know what I'm saying, and they got the little balance beam, they're holding the little balance beam and shit. It's like, if you lean too far to the right, you're going to fall. you lean too far to the left, you're going to fall. Sometimes you got to know when to lean to the right and when to lean to the left. So something that you just said right there, two feet in, two feet out, that touches again. Shouts out to my man Sam. We're going to keep saying that. Shouts out to Sam because Sam was the one that introduced You ain't sipping with Sam and you ain't sipping right. Get your life Get together. Get your fucking life together. <laughs> you just said, because this was something we both said on that episode, was I, when I care, I care too much. And like mm-hmm. you just said, you got to be two feet in, two feet out. But when you care too much, you always both feet in with the whole situation. And that would be something that could either, like you said, this is our... Some of the shit that I was saying, thinking and, and spitting on these tracks, I wouldn't even move like that now because you'll be realizing that when I'm two feet in with all situations, some of these situations don't even be what's good for me, don't even be what's best for anything. Thanks. I'm wasting my time and fucking myself up with this. No, nah, yeah. Like, that's that's one of the, you just said it, you just hit it on the head right there. Like, I'm wasting my time. And that's the one thing I realized is like, you know, come on, bro. Tomorrow ain't promised for nobody. Like, you could be doing all this shit right now, and then the next day you up out of here. You next, ain't see it coming. Next second. It don't even take the whole fucking day. Yeah, it, it, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, next second. Like, you feel me? Like, it could go either way. It is like, you got to take that time that you was gifted, and you can't take it for granted. You have to utilize that shit. That's important. You feel me? Like, once again, when I was on Sammy's podcast, because Sammy, you know, we talked about it a bunch of times. Like, it's like, when I go through my certain situations, bro, personal situations, it's like with my family, me and my line of cousins, we kind of like, we the men. Because it's not really a lot of men. They either disappear, they don't mess with the family, incarcerated. And we the men that most of the women come to for help. Now, I also grew older and learned that you're going to have to put your family second sometimes when you got your own. When you created your own, and you got your own. My brother... Even your mom, grandma, if I got kids, my kids come first. You feel me? All the time. If I got a family, they come first. Depend, give or take on the situation, they always going to be in the forefront of my thinking. You know what I mean? And that's how I carry it with my family. It's like we the, we the line of defense. So it's not like my focus is primarily on them. Like, I live. Oh, man. You good. We still on? Yeah, you good. Go ahead. All right. It's not like my primary focus is like I get up and I'm thinking, all right, how am I going to take care of my family today in that light? Not saying what I'm doing ain't going to take care of them. That's not the thinking I'm talking about. I'm talking about I'm not going to get up and be like, all right, let me go drive here and give this person $30. Let me go drive here and make sure he good. I got to do my own shit. But that's how our family is. So when we talk about me caring too much, it's like, I understand that when the roles was reversed, I know people did stuff that they didn't necessarily have to do. So now when we come back and we talk about that, it's like, yeah, I'm going to care too much because I'm, I'll be looking out for people. That's part of my nature. I'm a provider. You get what I'm saying? It's like, if I know we coming from the same mud pit, we coming from the same box, and I know the hurdles that you've gone through, I've invented the hurdles that you've been at. I know what it was like to get over that. I know where you at now. It's like, 
I'm not going to steer you wrong because we try and make a change somewhere because we seeing what's going on around us. That should be hard, homie. I ain't going to lie. Because there be times where I'm like, I be sorry because I'm like, y'all niggas don't even know what the fuck I got going on. Like, shit. I'm trying to help y'all. Uh, no, nah, I had this exact same situation. It took me a little longer because I had my daughter, my oldest daughter, I had her a little later. And mm-hmm. once I got like married and all that, like you're saying, once once your life ain't about you no more, then you start to look back and say, like, I can't risk her. I can't risk my whole situation because she need me to come the fuck home tonight. Like, she needs to know what the fuck is for dinner tonight. Like, I can't be risking all my situations for nobody. And nah, ultimately, bullshit. what I always tell niggas is my wife is not for the public. So if ultimately I get caught up in a situation, I got like two niggas that I really want talking to my wife. Like mm-hmm. I don't have 20 mm-hmm. niggas I want DMing my wife. I don't want 20 niggas picking my kids up from school or none of that. So I don't can't be putting myself in those type of situations. But that's uh, where, that's where like I said, don't, like I said on that episode, that's how niggas try to use your own loyalty against you. And that's goofy. Mm-hmm. If some niggas don't, some niggas don't hit the stage of growth. Some niggas don't mature. Some niggas get stuck in when we was 15 and when we was 20 and when we was what we was and not what we are. And, you know, hopefully you get out of that shit. If you are somebody that's stuck in that situation. <laughs> and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I ain't, I ain't really, I ain't going to say I'm necessarily stuck in it. I'm just realizing it and I'm navigating through it. Just figuring it out. Cause now well, I'm not, not even, no. see, not even, not even just you. Cause you know, like I said, this nigga's listening to this. You don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So whoever yeah. listening to that shit, that, you know what I'm saying? Somebody yeah. stuck in that shit that's listening to it and needed to hear that guy or girl. They need to. Yeah. You just got a big, you always, my whole drink now be like, you got a big picture thing. You got to step outside of your situation and see what it looked like from the outside. It's hard to do to be that honest with yourself, but you know, that's what's best for your situation. You what you got to do. So you don't get stuck on the treadmill of doing shit for people. And like you said, when you fall into a situation yourself, you look around and ain't got nobody to turn to. Yeah, it's just something you got pitched to the youngest, though. That'd be my only thing when we was talking about female masculinity and how that stuff kind of, like, crept up on the youth and then just completely overwhelmed them. It's like, me being my age, is like, I can look at what the old heads is doing. I can look at, I ain't going to say old heads. I can look at what the older people are doing around me. But then I also look at the younger ones, and I know some of the older ones is losing it low key. Not everybody, but a lot of them is losing it. They not teaching these youngers what they really need to know. They slacking. Some of them trying to be like them on some nut shit. So it's like, now you got a situation where people my age that actually understand it from both angles is like, we the ones that's going to have to kind of pull them towards the right direction. And it's not going to be easy because you got evils out here that people don't know, see, don't even understand. So it's up to people that's like in my age bracket, a little bit older than me to kind of be like the last line of defense for these young boys. And that's where I'll be at in my own world. I might have a situation with a family member. He might be in trouble this day and the third. And people don't listen to him because he's a kid. But I'll be the only one that'll let him talk. This be the joint with those situations. It's not even an age thing. It's like minded people. Just because somebody 14 don't mean that they can't get it. Just because somebody 45 don't mean that they do get it. Like, just because you're 65 don't mean that you get it. It's all about just like-minded people. It's people who have common sense. It's one thing you're going to always figure out in life. Because if common sense was common, that shit would just be called sense. Niggas don't be having common sense. Niggas don't be just making smart decisions. Some niggas are just dumb. We all can't bat a thousand. It's just not how it works. So, it's all about just people that's willing to listen. If you got somebody that's willing to listen, no matter how old they is, you can always learn shit. I tell people all the time, I get topics from my daughter is in elementary school. I can listen to her talking to one of her friends and maybe it'll pull something out of that shit. My little daughter is fucking, she's not even in kindergarten yet. And it's the same thing because you just need to pay attention. It's just people who are willing to listen. If a motherfucker ain't willing to listen, then you can't grow with that motherfucker because they know it all. They got it all. That's what they think. And you got to leave that type of motherfucker alone. And like you said, it could be something happening with a fucking kid, and if you ain't willing to listen, then you're never going to know what the fuck is going on with that kid. If you just keep brushing them off, you don't know what you're talking about, that ain't really what's going on, then you always going to have that problem. You got to get with niggas who want to listen. 
Um, mm-hmm. Since you brought up the kids, though, this was something else that you touched on on that same episode was giving back. What makes you want to give back to the community? Because we talked about like book bag drives, turkey giveaways, and all of that type of shit. Because I was like, that's the same type of shit that we that I did before. So talk to me about what made you want to do that type of shit. Honestly, what what made me want to do it was what I seen when I was living. Well, not even I ain't gonna say when I I'm still kind of low key going through the same situations. So it's like what I'm experiencing around me and what I see that made me want to give back when you from a certain community you already know how that community operates you dig what I'm saying so me being out because I'm I'm out every day bro and I'm not even bragging I don't be home so I'm literally out all the time so I'm seeing the recipe of what's going on from sunrise to sunset you feel what I'm saying and I'm just seeing the circumstances of where we at especially as a people here like just i ain't, i can't really speak for la new york i ain't from over there i don't know what y'all got going on over there but over here the youth over here i see what it is i see the peer pressure um i see the influences but i also see the the, the misguidance when it comes to certain influences and just where these young boys is going as, as a whole in general that's what really made me want to dive into it and steer them the right way because I see how many people aren't. I see how many niggas is leading these kids astray, leading them to an early grave. You feel what I'm saying? And it don't even got to be motherfuckers who think they doing it by accident or willingly. It's like some niggas, uh, how can I put it? Some niggas uh, intentionally do certain shit knowing that it's causing harm to the youth. But if it's not causing that much harm, then it's like they don't really mind it. Whereas people don't know the damage that's actually being caused by shit like that. So it's like a threat that everybody knows is a threat, but they cool with it being around as long as that shit don't get too crazy. And that's what really made me want to go in and like, all right, I got to stay up. That's what that. happens, though, if you're just thinking about what's best for the moment and for yourself and not what's best for us. Like, mm-hmm. some people be in bad spots where young boy is 11 and he got a little sister and a little brother to take care of. So he got to take some chances. He got to do some shit. Mm-hmm. But the young boy who mom is a nurse, dad got a trucking company, don't need to be doing this shit. And you really need to be like taking the you need to be really looking at your situation and evaluating it the correct way. Like I said earlier, the hardest shit to do is look in the mirror and make a strong evaluation, a correct evaluation. A lot of niggas lie to themselves. And you that's can't crazy look in the mirror. Just... You can't look in the mirror and be six six and say like you short. Like you can't look in the mirror yeah. and be five ten and say like you the biggest nigga in the world. Like you're making a bad evaluation of yourself. And some people do that type of shit, even as a kid, and you might just stick with it because you never grew up. You never was in a situation where you had to grow up. Or you was in a situation where you had to grow up too fucking early or too fast. You had to be making mm-hmm. grown-up decisions that you shouldn't have been able to make. Like, what are we eating for dinner tonight? And you're 11 or 12. Like, that's not a situation that the 12-year-old should be in. But that's unfortunately that's where some of the little niggas be at. And that's crazy that you say that shit because that's exactly what it be. The motherfuckers who they be doing certain shit but they don't have to. That'd be the thing. Like you said, young boy 11, he got brothers and sisters to take care of. His family structure is not that sturdy. It's yeah, not yeah. that grounded. Versus the other motherfucker who he got access to it. His friends might be into it, but because mom a lawyer, his pop on his own trucking company or some crazy shit like yeah, that. Like, <laughs> or whatever the case may be. Like You got every, got you got every pair of Jordans out. You, you feel they got a CLA in the pair. driveway. Y'all cool. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, young boy had a new pair of snakes in three years. Y'all not in the same situation. Like, So stop trying to be in the same situation. That's that's the only reason why I come back and I give because I see, I see a lot of that. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't never had a situation where my folks own something, bro. Unfortunately, with my family, the bullshit go back generations. It's been generations of trauma. It's been generations of hurt. You know what I mean? You might have a family member that don't like me just because I'm so and so son. But I don't know no, what everybody. I did. Yeah, everybody got that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> everybody's situations is like that. Uh, 
I ain't even saying they not, but I'm talking about to the extent where it affects you to the point where you don't have the you don't have the luxury that a lot of these people do have. Like like we were saying, you the young boy that got to take care of your little brothers and sisters, but you don't got much options. That's how mm-hmm. I was just talking about from my standpoint. You feel me? Just how I was coming. I'm already knowing everybody families be like that. That's why I never look at it like my shit the worst because I know it's somebody that's going through something ten times worse than what I'm going hey. through. Cause you somebody know? living under the somebody live under the bridge because they such and such son or they such and such daughter. You know what I'm saying? Type <laughs> shit. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So, but I'm just laying it all down, like all different shapes and forms. But man, you telling the same story is just depending on how you tell it. You know what I mean? But when it came to me, that's what kind of made me who I am today. That's what gave me the drive. I remember the place where I had to go hungry for a couple of days. Now it's like if I do it again. It's like, it ain't nothing. I done found ways around it because I done been through it before. I done made it e- easier for myself if I had to go on them gauntlet. I had to run through that gauntlet, my fault. And I had to go on them little periods where it's like, I got to take this hiatus and do whatever. It don't just got to be about me eating this whatever. Whatever you went through is going to show in the light in an evolved form further down the line. You know what I mean? It just depends on how you go about it. Honestly. All right, so now in the last segment before we close this one out, episode 134, uh, we're going to do a little get to know. We're going to throw some questions at you. These are lighthearted joints. Don't think too hard about the answers. You just shoot. Tell me what you think these answers should be. This, boss, this is sponsored by Custom Hustle at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. It's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jerseys, custom jackets. We do football, basketball, baseball, hockey, and soccer jerseys. We got four versions of the sneaks, the CH1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s available in all colors. We got the flip-flops. We got the barber capes. We got the cargo pants, the collar shirts, the t-shirts. Uh, yeah, the barber capes is down at the barber shop, available in all colors. You know However you want those customized, we can make that happen. <laughs> um, we got the collar shirts, the sweatsuits. Like I said, you name it, we customizing it over there at Custom Hustle World. A custom muscle co on Twitter, and I always tell people everything is one of one unless you buy four of them. Now, <laughs> this is a get to know joint for you. Now, YB, who is your biggest musical influence? Lil Wayne, man. Lil Wayne at the top, only because of his like he kind of captured every aspect of hip hop, and he was able to put it on a pedestal for everybody to see and he had so much variety to it that he was able to really give a give a full viewpoint of what hip-hop was as a young man like me listening to his lyrical capability just how he was on songs so his performance capabilities and song making capabilities yeah definitely the top what's the one song it could be anybody it ain't got to be wayne but if you want to use wayne that's cool What's the one song that you feel like, damn, this is my life story? Nothing like it. Being a seagull. Copy that. It's, it's like being, that that song right there, it, it kind of put it kind of put a, a magnifying glass on me. Cause it was like everything he was saying from whether it was street shit or personal shit. Like I just felt it all in all, how I think, my perspective on life, people. Definitely up there when we come to that. I'm gonna throw an age at you. You tell me the first thing you think when I say this age to you. Seventeen. Twenty. Twenty is the first thing you think of when you hear seventeen. Depending on what we're talking about, I'm thinking twenty. I say I, I throw the age at you, and you tell me that twenty is the first thing that you think about. Yeah. All right, cop. You don't want you want to elaborate or you want to leave it alone? <laughs> well, it, like I said, it depends, dog. Because I could elaborate, but if you're going in the direction I'm thinking you're going, then we ain't talking about the same. No, shit. we're not going. We're not going in this. Like I said, these are the lighthearted joints. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah, yeah, shit, this shit, clearly. I'm thinking twenty. I'm elaborating because twenty, though. I'm looking at it from like big bro, little bro perspective. That's how I was looking at it. All right, copy that. Last one. What's your favorite TV show? You said I'm outside all day, so this means you probably ain't in the house watching nothing. But what's gonna make you stop and watch? Yeah. All in all, or right now? All in all, 
overall. Just give me in. Just give me one. If you got two, that's cool. Martin. I always tell niggas if you ain't like Martin, you wasn't raised right. Copy that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, bullshit. Oh, bullshit, again, we, again, the way we're going to close it out is shouts out to my man Sippin' with Sam for introducing us. That's episode 134. Tell, tell everybody where to follow you, where to follow the clothing line before we wrap this one up. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on TikTok. That's yb.norse N-O-R-R-I-S You can find me on Instagram. You can follow me on TikTok. You can follow me on uh. I'm going to be on YouTube as well, so get my YouTube account. That's also YB.Norse. I'm going to be way more active on YouTube, blogs, everything, TBA, TBA. But um, you can find me on Instagram at nor.apparel. That's N-O-R dot A-P-P. Y'all know how to spell apparel, man. Don't be playing with me. Um, 215. Uh, don't, be, don't, be, don't be speaking for everybody now. You know, niggas in the back don't be knowing how to... <laughs> It'll be in the bio. It'll be in the bio. It'll be in the bio for the episode. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. You crazy. You crazy. Listen, but yeah, man, you can find me on uh, like I said, TikTok, Instagram, that's Nora Apparel. Again, for the ones in the back, two one five. And like I said, tap in, man. We're gonna be having a surprise at the end of this month and a surprise photo shoot, man. We got so much stuff coming. Uh, the website coming up too. Stay tuned. Uh, right now I'm doing. Actual personal delivery. So anybody in the city, if you want to tap in, DM that account, man. I got stuff on me right now as we speak. Trunk pop type situation. Hit me in my DMs. We're going to be live. We're going to be active. Copy that. Appreciate you coming on, bro. That's episode 134. Salute. We are out. I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>